In this video, we're going to talk about odour pollution control, what it's about, why businesses and councils and so forth might be interested in getting this happening when it comes to odour control. G'day Tony, how are you? Good day too, well done. So let's talk about odour pollution control. Let's start with what's that actually all about? Odour pollution control. Um, so there are various industries um, or uh, wastewater systems in particular that by their nature they generate odours. Right. And uh, that causes a nuisance. Uh, it causes a nuisance to uh, the surrounding areas, to your neighbours. And uh, when that happens, um, then uh, you, know, you, you might come under the attention of the regulators, which is something you don't want. Yeah, absolutely. So we're talking uh, not just about, for example, a whole city, but let's talk a little bit more micro here. What particular businesses should pay attention to odour pollution control? In businesses, there's various industrial processes, but um, things like uh, abattoirs and, uh, and, and tanneries sort mm -hmm. of come to mind. Sure. And uh, places like uh, pet food production. Um, but by and large, it's uh, the, the, the uh, most common one, though, remains uh, wastewater, wastewater treatment plants, mm. sewer pump stations. But there's any number of industry out there that, uh, that, that might generate odour as well. You've seen a lot of this over the course of the years. What happens when the wheels fall off, when people don't pay attention to this? What are, you spoke about the regulators coming in. Uh, what happens in that circumstance? Yeah, you, you don't want to uh, come under the attention of the regulators. It's going to be very distracting from, uh, from running your business. Uh, you're going to have to allocate resources and money to, to dealing with either the regulator or, uh, or dealing with your, um, with your neighbours. So that takes, uh, that takes time. And of course, uh, once the regulator becomes involved, then uh, you're looking at potential for fines um, and uh, improvement notices. So they're going to uh, force your hand and, uh, and make you spend money and allocate resources to dealing with with odour control. So better to keep on the front foot, I imagine. With that in mind, if that's the negative, if that's what happens when the wheels fall off, uh, what uh, benefit can it have for a business to actually really have effective odour pollution control? Your reputation in the community is, is, is very important. Once, you, um, once your reputation is tarnished, it's very hard to bring it back. Right. And similarly, once a regulator is involved, uh, then you're on that merry-go-round. The, the uh, ideal situation is to avoid that, to mm. be proactive, mm. uh, understand that you have a problem that needs to be resolved and uh, take the action that needs to be taken yourself before others tell you that you need to do it. Start yeah, ring, ring around and causing problems for you. Yeah. Uh, you spoke about tanneries, for example, you spoke about pet food. Uh, what are some of the stories from your travels over the years of other industries that really need odour pollution control? Yeah, well, they're, they're probably the, the worst. Uh, the sort of odour that uh, those sort of processes can generate is, uh, uh, is pretty rank and uh, you, know, you wouldn't want to be sort of living any, anywhere near them. Mm. And people are just not going to tolerate that. And uh, in the modern age, people understand their, their rights and, and yeah. what they can do. A little too well. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, uh, they're just not going to tolerate it and, and uh, you know, uh, ultimately, if, if you don't do the right thing, you could find yourself shut down. I understand that people who live near some kind of smelly factory are going to make phone calls, cause trouble. Let's talk about city-wide things. Uh, when it comes to public area pollution control or even city council pollution control, uh, what's been your experience there and, uh, and, and what to do and how to deal with that? Yeah, that comes down uh, to uh, so either wastewater systems or landfill are the two, two main issues there. So um, there's lots of potential for odour generation in a, in a sewer system. Yeah, of course. Uh, throughout suburbia, there's uh, pump stations and vent stacks. And then at some stage, there's a treatment plant. And they're tucked away, by the way. People don't even know they're near them in most cases. No, but with the expanding urbanisation, uh, you, uh, you might build that treatment plant at some stage, and it's miles from anywhere. But then encroaching urbanisation, uh, then you find that all of a sudden there are actually um, houses and uh, people living They're right nearby too, too close mm, mm, mm. so what's the and you were talking about different ways of dealing with those there's um when it comes to odor control there's no 
panacea. There's, there's no sort of magic pill. There's um, a lot of different mechanisms for odour generation and a lot of different technologies and, uh, that are used and processes that are used to deal with them. So you need to, um, you need to be able to uh, look at all those different options and determine just uh, what is the right one for that particular problem. Thanks very much, Tony. For those of you who'd like to find out more, please visit us online at the Bullbeck Enviro website, bullbeckenviro.com.au. Feel free to send us an email, give us a call. Uh, we'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions and help as much as we can.